Hi there, folks, and welcome back to another Workspace Wednesday right here on Lean Strategies International, LLC, where this week on today's Workspace Wednesday, we're going to be answering a tricky question where somebody wants to know, how can you make a vertical progress bar? Now, this one's really tricky, so try to stay with us as we walk you through and help you to understand the function that we're about to write. We're gonna keep it really simple so that you can play around with it and make adjustments as needed. But let's say we have a setup here where we have some SKUs and we want to track the percent complete on each of those SKUs. And we want that to be a vertical progress bar like we saw in our question. So that function is gonna require a few different things. We're gonna to have to define the y-axis, the x-axis, and we're gonna take you through using the help center here that Google gives you so you can see that we can, we're can we able to build custom functions um, and understand the syntax as well. Now, even we had to look at a little bit, so just kind of stay with us while we build this vertical progress bar. And remember to subscribe to the channel, share this with your friends, and like the video. We would really appreciate it. And let's jump right in while we make a vertical progress bar. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to define our function or our uh, spark line function here and to do that like all functions we want to put in our equal sign and the first thing that we're going to see pop up is that Google is going to intuitively ask us if we want to multiply these two numbers we don't want to do that so we're going to go ahead and type in spark line and we're going to give our open bracket and then it's going to ask us for our data now the data that we want our uh, vertical progress bar to go off of is in B2. And we're gonna start uh, referring to this data as our column chart, because it's really important that you understand that. The difference in the progress bar when we go vertical and uh, versus horizontal is just simply a matter of the chart type that we define. So we're gonna, we're gonna Go ahead and build this real quick and you'll see the difference as we write our function. So let's put in our comma. And now what we want to do is we want to define that chart type. So remember, we're gonna use quotes here. We're gonna type in chart type and put in our quotes again. And then what we're gonna do is hit a comma. Now this is the difference. Normally what we would see in a progress chart is the word bar, but we don't want bar. What we do want is a column. So we're gonna go ahead and put in our quotes and put in column. And that will make our chart go vertical up and down based on cell B2. Now we need to define our Y and our X axes. Uh, uh, sorry, our Y axis only because our Y is vertical. X would be horizontal. So we just want to define our Y. Okay, so once we have our column placed in there, now we can kind of chain this together with a semicolon. And then we're going to put open quote and we're going to type in Y minimum. Now if we go back to our help center, you can see that if we scroll down here, this is gonna set the minimum value uh, along the vertical axes, which is where our progress bar or our column chart is going to go. So we'll jump back, and once we have Y minimum, we're gonna put in a comma, and then we're going to put a zero. So our minimum is 0% done, right? Now let's put in another semicolon, and then we're going to define our max. So we're gonna use the same principle, Y max. And if we go back to our help center, you can see this is our maximum value along the vertical axes. So we'll go back and once we have our Y max, then we can put in our comma. Now for us, it's gonna be 100% complete. So how we wanna do that is just put a number one. And once we have that number one, 
We're going to put in another semicolon. Now we can kind of make it a little bit customized if we want. We're not going to get too custom, but this is our color portion. So this is going to define the column's color. And so we're going to type in color and then quotes. And then what we're going to do is place a comma. Now I'm going to use, um, well, what we can do here is we can define a color. And so to do that, we're just going to select a separate cell to make it easy. We'll go to custom and I like this red and then we'll take our hex code right here. We'll copy it and then I'm just going to hit cancel. Now instead of cell H2, which just popped up because we selected it, we're going to put in our hex code. And so we need some quotes and we'll stick that hex code in there. And then we're going to close that off and put in another semicolon. Because what we need to do now, if we only have 2%, 50%, anywhere between 0 and 99%, there's going to be an empty space in our vertical uh, progress bar. And that empty space, we got to do a few things so that it doesn't show up solid and fill in the entire cell. So what we want to do is first define the word empty. And if we go over here to our help section, this is going to set how to treat empty cells or values that are not in there. So remember our max is one and our minimum is zero. So if we only have 50%, it has to know what to do with the additional 50%. We just want that empty. And then we're gonna put in a comma here. And then we're going to use the word ignore for that portion that's empty. Once we have ignore, we're gonna put in another semicolon and we're going to use the phrase N-A-N or not a number. And if you come back over here, you can scroll down and you will see uh, here that this, this tells us how to treat cells with uh, non-numeric data. Okay, so just in case we don't have uh, a number in there, we want that to also be ignored and remain empty. So once we have that in there, then we're gonna put in another comma and some more quotes, and we're going to say convert. And then we're gonna close that out. And if we go back over here, the word convert is going to help us to uh, define, uh, as you can see, if we use the word convert, it's going to ignore that empty portion. So we have to make sure that these are in there in the proper order. So once we have that in there, now we can go back to our formula and now we're ready to close this thing out. And the way that we do that is we put in our squiggly brackets and close it again. And then we're gonna hit enter. And you'll see that we have a portion here or 1% that's red. So let's go ahead and put in 50% and you can see it kind of jump up and 75%. Now, if we wanna do that with all of them, what we're gonna do is grab the corner and just drag it straight down. Now let's say that you want to change the color of that. Remember in our formula, our color was found right here. And so if we don't particularly like that red, we can go back over to our custom section and maybe we want a green, we'll come over here. We can find the color we like and then copy the hex code. And I'm just gonna hit cancel come back over here and change our hex code. And then you will see that our bar is now green. So you can kind of customize the color of your column also. So that's it. That's how you build a vertical progress bar that'll go up and down based on percentages. And it changes based on how much percent of your work is done. Hope this helped you out. And remember, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below and we'd be happy to get back to them and help you. And we look forward to seeing you right back here on Lean Strategies International LLC, where you can find solutions that ignite your power.